Evening, everyone. How are you guys doing? Well, all right. Uh, my name is Louis Chudasoki, and I have the great pleasure of welcoming you to this wonderful event. And I can promise it's wonder because I've become pretty intimate with a lot of the work. Robert Pinsky himself invited me to introduce tonight, and I'm saying that A to brag. But also because I'm pretty certain now that the reason I came to Boston six years ago was really to eavesdrop on this stage of Robert's work. From his recent memoir, Jersey Breaks, a book I was blessed to hear in parts in his own words in advance of reading, to his recordings with Grammy-winning and multiply Grammy-nominated pianist composer Lawrence Hobgood, the trilogy Poem Jazz, House Hour, and now Proverbs of Limbo. Tonight, Pinsky and Hobgood are accompanied by a stellar batch of musicians who express in sound tremendous backstories. Stan Strickland, vocalist, sax player, flautist, with a pedigree that crisscrosses the planet, and who received the Martin Luther King Music Award in 1991 from Our Fair City, and in 1994, the Cambridge Favorite Musician Award, right? John Lockwood, bassist, who like Strickland has played world over with iconic figures in the world of jazz, Joe Henderson, Pharoah Sanders, I could go on and on and on, and is also professor of music at Berkeley and the New England Conservatory. And also the absurdly accomplished Mino, Sile sorry, Mino Sinelu, composer, producer, and percussionist whose work ranges from Weather Report to Miles Davis, yes, I said Miles Davis, <laughs> to DJ Logic for people under 40. <laughs> Again, these cats are, as we used to say in musical as well as criminal terms, Heavy, yeah. <laughs> Tonight's performance is lifted by the cellist Catherine Bent, whose sound is as rich in jazz as it is in Brazilian styles and idioms. Robert and I are interested in how music and words can work together. I'm of a generation that dared to claim the term spoken word for itself, right? From hip hop to the fabled New Yorican Poets Cafe, from say Gil Scott Heron to Jamaican dub poetry. The what we often did, I can now say, now that I'm over 40, um, was reduce the spoken word too often to cliche, to sentimentality, to political posture. That's why with what I do, I prefer the term unsung word. It signals a desire to find a different relationship between speaking and music, vocal utterance, and instrumental sound. But that's also why I'm here tonight, to witness and learn, like you, from the relationship between this poet's voice and its interplay with the sonic backstories of these particular musicians. That to me, as the great African-American writer Ralph Ellison would say, is the essence of poetry and the essence of jazz playing with and against always differing relationships. Thank you. Having you. 
I drowned in the fire of having you, and I burned in the river of not having you. I burned in the river, and I drowned in the fire. We lived together for hours. We lived together for hours in a house of a thousand rooms, and we were parted for a thousand years. When I drowned in the fire, and burned in the river. Ten minutes ago, ten minutes ago, we raised our children. Ten minutes ago, we raised our children. They cover the earth, and they have forgotten that we existed. It was not the worldly illusion of Maya. It was certainly not a ladder to perfection. It was this cold sunlight falling on this warm earth. I followed you and lost the world. I followed you and lost the world without regret. Without regret, but with stormy recriminations. Someday, far down that corridor of horror. Someday, far down that corridor of horror. The future. Someday, far down that corridor of horror. The future. Somebody will buy this. This my picture of you. Somebody will buy it. For the frame, somebody will buy this, my picture of you, for the frame at a stall in a dwindled city. And studying your face, that person will decide to harbor it a little while longer from the waters of anonymity and the fierce acids of breath. picture of you for the frame 
had a stall in the Dwindle City for the frame, but we'll decide to harbor this picture a little while longer from the acids of breath and the waters of anonymity because, because I drowned in the fire of having you and because I burned in the river I burn in the river of having you I think you probably can tell how much pleasure I take in working with these great musicians. <laughs> My friend Louis Schutz, okay, Louis did a good job of describing them, but still, Lawrence Hopgood. <laughs> Nino Sinello. John Lockwood, Dan Strickland, Catherine Bent. The next poem is the title poem from this musical album, and it will be the title poem of my next book of poems that comes out next June. Proverbs of Limbo. The Buddha is a liquor store on a busy corner. The proverbs of Limbo flutter between the flames of righteousness and the glibness of euphemism. <laughs> gibberish and heredity, runes of light, gnomons of shadow, bromides of, of. Listen, begins a joke in the form of an aphorism. Listen, cancer schmancer, so long as you have your health. Listen, the author most quoted in the British Houses of Parliament is William Blake. Conviction resounds in the byways of bloviation. The Committee on Narrative has condemned it, but nevertheless, it may be a lie. Triple pillars of identity, of mystery, of law, all bound and refuted by the cardboard belt that God wears to amuse the angels.
the Buddha is a liquor store on the busy corner. The proverbs of limbo. The proverbs of limbo flutter between the flames of righteousness and the pits of euphemism. William Blake took the sauce out of Christianity with the proverbs of hell. The proverbs of limbo invoke gibberish and heredity. All the bromides of old. The committee on narrative has condemned it. Just the same, it might be a lie. A joke in the form of an aphorism. Listen, listen. Cancer schmancer. So long as you've got your health. The author most quoted in the Houses of Parliament is William Blake. Conviction, conviction, conviction resounds in the byways of bloviation, on the triple pillars of identity, of mystery, of law. Mystery, law, and identity. Mystery, law, and identity, all refuted and bound by the cardboard belt that God wears to amuse the angels. Proverbs of limbo flutter yeah, 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 yeah. between the furies of righteousness <laughs> and the pits of euphemism. Oh, oh, Gibberish and heredity. Oh, run.
moments of light, no moments of shadow. The committee and narrative, the committee and narrative has convinced it. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it may be. Limbo means a border, and that poem tries to get some of the way I feel when I realize I can't understand the different overlapping borders of the present. The next poem is called Talking. Talking was kind of, though we were ostensibly Orthodox Jews, talking really was the religion of my family when I, when I was growing up. And in my mind, talking is deeply related to music. They're almost exactly the same thing in my mind. How many dead do you in my mind? Pitch is so important in talking. And this poem, Talking, it tries to think about one of the most beloved and tormented examples in the shameful. 20th century history of oppression, torture, falsehood, authoritarianism, actual, actual fascism. And that anecdote is a story about the great Russian poet Anna Akhmatova, whose son was imprisoned by Stalin. The poem is talking. be a way of thinking. There are people who fear doing it more than they fear flying or heights or dying. I do it for a living. To be all talk is being less than nothing. But now you're talking is more than you were before. Quote, I love how when he takes me to the market, he talks to all the packages. My mother-in-law said, not long before she died, he talks to the lettuce. I'm talking to you now. I talk to the cat. In the frozen queue of grief at Stalin's prison, the question somebody asked Akhmatova, can you describe this? Can you describe this? Yes, the poet answers, I can.
the child's hand on her throat. The child's hand on her throat can feel her voice vibrate. It means she is there, inside. The stammerer finds relief in speaking verses because it feels like talking or less like talking, more like singing. I mutter flakes of meaning. Blah, blah, blah. thinking or a way of avoiding something, the articulated grunts of grief and rage. Even the Iliad by Homer yaks. The baby rehearses the melodies of speech, the tunes of chat, of menace, of welcome. Vocal without words, vocal without words. Morricone's music speaks for the iron faces of ugly cowboys. Does Akhmatova's, does her legendary yes exceed even the requiem itself that she wrote? Now, you really are talking. You're really saying something. Yes, and can you? Long before Stalin, long before everything, she was born. The new lungs already learning to breathe. The new lungs already learning to breathe. Her tongue. Her tongue already lungs learning to breathe and her tongue already studying, studying its mission.
when Blake, when Blake wrote those proverbs of hell, he was trying with a kind of impiety, a kind of complicated blasphemy to overcome all of the rotten decay and falseness in Christianity and come back to the actual teaching of Jesus Christ. And for me, that's a great model of irreverence. I don't pretend to match it. But uh, with a little help, I'm going to do some literary irreverence. My heart aches. My heart aches. And a drowsy numbness pains my sense. As though of hemlock I had drunk. Or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past. And leafy words had sunk. Tis not through envy of your happy lot. But being too happy in your happiness that you, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of shadows numberless and beech and green, sings about summer in full-throated ease. draft of vintage that's been cooled a long time in the deep delved earth, tasting of flora and the country green, of Provencal song and sunburned mirth, of dance. Oh. emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past, and leafy words had sunk. Tasting of flora and the country green, full of the true, the blushful hypocrite, 
with beaded bubbles winking at the brim with beaded bubbles winking at the brim and purple stained mouth then I could drink then I could drink and fade away then I could drink and fade away and leave the world unseen and with you fade away with beaded bubbles winking at the brim to fade away away into the forest dim John Keats was crazy about claret. <laughs> that he just loved red wine tremendously. And it is traditionally associated with music and poetry, sister arts. I'll go back even uh, further in time. And, uh, or we will. I hope my friends help me with a 16th century poem. <laughs> By Thomas Campion. Follow your saint. Follow with accents sweet. Haste you, sad notes. Fall at that woman's flying feet. There, wrapped in a cloud of sorrow. Pity move and tell the lavisher, the ravisher of my soul. Tell her I perish for her love. But if she scorns mine never ceasing pain, then burst with sighing in her sight my music, my poetry, and never come back again. Everything that I sang, always to her praise, did tend. She was always first. She was the one where my songs always end. Yet she, my love, and my music, she runs away from both. She flies my love, she flies my poems, she flies for my music, the music that's her echo, and her beauty's sympathy, haste you fed notes, fall at her flying feet, pursue her, pursue her scornful flight, let it suffice. Let it suffice. It was all breathed and it all died for her delight. Ooh, 
follow your saint, follow with accents sweet. Haste your sad notes, fall, fall at her flying feet. Fall at her flying feet, there wrapped in clouds of my sorrow. Fall at the feet of the one who runs from my love, from my poems, from my music. But if she scorns my never ceasing pain, fly, follow your saint, follow with accent seat, burst with sighing in her sight, and never return again. Everything I sang always to her praise to ten, and her beauty that was my music's twin. Yet did she, my love, and my music, and my poems, she did fly. Let my notes pursue her scornful feet. Let it suffice. Let it suffice. They were breathed and died in her delight. Haste you sad notes or fall at her flying feet. There, wrapped in clouds of sorrow, Pity move, haste you, sad notes, fall at her flying feet. Tell the ravisher of my soul, I perish for her love. Fall at her flying feet. Oh, tell her, tell the ravisher of my soul. Fall at her flying feet. She that my songs and my bones did flee and scorn. Tell the ravisher of my soul. Tell her I perish. I perish for her love. Haste you, sad notes. Fall at her. All that I wrote, all that I sang, all to her soul, detend all for her. All for her, detend. Just saying that uh, what you're seeing in the combination of the 16th century Luft poem and Stan vocalizing and playing bluesy notes on a bass clarinet, what you're seeing is two great old traditions of male self pity. <laughs> Long midday flourish. What have we got without that? Um, I'll do that thing that uh, is sometimes annoying at poetry readings. I'll sort of say what I'm trying to do in this poem, <laughs> um, or what it's about. I don't know. So it's like I can't. I'm doing it. I'll stop trying to describe it. When I was growing up in New Jersey. Place names and words that I see on the news, like Mirapol and Chernovitz and Chervitz and Mirapol. I thought they were New Jersey names. <laughs> really. And so often, 
some place name in Belarusia, including Pinsk. I'll do a quick anecdote. I had a lot of trouble somebody was trying to pay me money and the check kept not coming through. This was from Turkey. He called the president of the bank and the president of the bank said, oh, I can't send money to Pinsky. That's a Belarusian name. And it's banned. So the person did a bit, give a kind of literary introduction of me <laughs> and the money came through. So this poem is called Place Name Echoes. It's got to do with those place names and it's dedicated to my friend, the late great Polish poet, uh, Adam Zagajewski. Place Name Echoes. child's idea of blood is a scraped knee. I heard the names as New Jersey names. Old Mr. Lyman crooning the prayers to himself under his breath all day long. Old Mr. Chernovitz Our friends, Manny and B. Mirabal, hidden in the homely consonants, echoes of blood. Jerry Lewis from Levitch, Ukrainian for Levi. Yosel Tonopol, Yosel Tarnopol, a survivor, always smiling in his bad clothes as a child saw him. Murder, murder exploding again in Babin Yard. Babin Yard. That is to Bobby Yar as Kiev is to Kiev. 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 Babin Yar. Bobby Yar. Chasms. Chasms of blood in one spelled shade of pronunciation or another. The Lvov of Adam's poem is Lviv.
לבוב, לביב, קייב, קייב. מיסטר ליימן was from וילנו, וילניאס, וילנה. וילנו, וילניאס, וילנה. The instrument of cousin tongues. Cousin tongues, and every tongue a fanged instrument. familiar spirit, chasms of blood in every spelled pronunciation, a makeshift calm or a makeshift explosion. Fate saturates names. Every city of Jerusalem wrote Adam. And every person a Jew. Every city of Jerusalem. Every person a Jew. Lvov, Lviv, Vilna, Vilnius, Vilna. Every name, as plain as a peach, Adam wrote, as plain as a peach, over and over again. In each chorus of that names, of that names, blood. before it's a demonstration of what we think we're doing together. <laughs> I'll say a poem a cappella and then the musicians and I will do it together. The poem is a it's another 16th century or early 17th century poem by the great poet Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson's excuse for his excuse for loving. His excuse for loving. Let it not your wonder move, bless your laughter that I love. Though I now write 50 years I have had and have my peers. Poets, though divine, are women or men, some of love dissolved again, and it isn't always face, clothes, or fortune gives the grace, or the feature, or the youth. But the language and the truth with the ardor and the passion gives the lover weight and fashion. <clears throat> If you then would hear the story, first prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now either whom to love or how, but be glad along with me when you learn that this is she of whose beauty it was sung, she shall make the old man young. Keep The middle age it stay and let nothing hide decay till she be the reason why all the world for love may die yeah. <laughs> Ben Johnson thank you
Let it not your wonder move. Bless your laughter that I love. Though I now write fifty years, I have had and have my peers. Poets, though divine, are women and men. Some is loved as old again, and it isn't always face, clothes, or fortune. Gives the grace or the feature or the youth, but the language and the truth with the ardor and the passion that's what gives the lover weight and fashion. First, prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now, either whom to love or how. But be glad along with me when you learn this is she. This is she, of whose beauty it was sung, she shall make the old man young. She shall make the old man young, keep the middle age its stay, and let nothing hide decay, till she be the reason why all the world for love may die. If you then would hear the story, first prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now, either whom to love or how. But be glad along with me, when you learn that this is she, of whose beauty it was sung, she shall make the old man young. She shall make the old man young, keep the middle age its stay, and... Let nothing hide decay. Let nothing hide decay. Till she be the reason why. Till she be the reason why all the world for love, all the world for love may die.
Thanks so much. What we're going to do now is, speaking of mortality, I'm going to sit down, <laughs> as becomes my years, and rest, and the band is going to play, and then we'll come back and do two or three more things.
Catherine Gant. Avoid using the word that was so cool. Um, I think maybe it's time for us to do Bronca. Okay. Are we all ready for Bronca? Of course, as you've seen demonstrated, these musicians were born ready. <laughs> the Brooklyn Dodger pitcher, Ralph Bronca, was the 15th of 17 children. <laughs> This poem I'm writing, this poem is not the poem of what literary scholars call the speaker. These are the words of Robert Pinsky speaking. Branca's father was an immigrant from Calabria. These words that I am speaking are about Ralph Bronco, who wore Dodger uniform in Brooklyn, number 13. Speaking, speaking is the punchline of a Jewish joke. Some Romans call Calabrians, Africani. Brooklyn had its own daily. The Brooklyn Eagle. At 85, at the age of 85, Ralph Bronco discovered about his mother. He learned her secret when he was 85. He was 21 when Jackie Robinson joined the Brooklyn Dodgers. At 11, I, Robert Pinsky, at 11, I loved Robinson for his daring, running the bases, stealing home, his fire. Bronco was one of the few who befriended Robinson. I was too young, I was too young to understand his mission. The fuel, the fuel of that dancing to taunt the pitcher. Robinson never forgot Branca's kindness. What the old man found out about his mother when he was 85 is that she was born a Jew in Hungary. Kati. Kati. After Branca gave up the most famous home run ever, back in the clubhouse, Branca lay weeping face down. Kati, Kati gave birth to 17 Catholic children. The Giants won the pennant, 1951. Branca means claw, a good name for a pitcher. When he was crying, his teammates thought it was best that he cry alone. But, quote, quote, only my dear friend Jackie, who knew me so well, came over and put his arm around my shoulder. The 
Nazis killed the aunts and uncles that Branca didn't know existed until he was old. 42. 42. In itself, a nothing of a number. The Dodgers traded Branca to the Tigers. Grief with its countless forms and different ways and stresses. Glory, glory, a greater thing than success, but slower. Some of the tigers who used to be giants explained to Branca how the giants had stolen the pictures, stole the signals from opposing catchers. A telescope in center field, wires, buzzers. Branca chose not to talk about it. It's all in Prager's book. Prager's research unearthed Kati and those aunts and uncles. The Dodgers were taken from Brooklyn. The Dodgers were taken from Brooklyn by their owner. I, Robert Pinsky, refused to say his name. I didn't live in Brooklyn, but I knew the score. I knew it was an underdog place. Nowadays, once a year, all major leaguers wear Jackie Robinson's number, 42. Big deal. In the joke, in the joke, the person who answers the phone at Goldberg, Goldberg, and Goldberg says repeatedly, Goldberg is out of the office, and so is Goldberg, and Goldberg. All right then, let me talk to Goldberg. Speaking. Robinson spoke to Branca. Robinson spoke to Branca. Without you, he said, we never could have made it. We never could have made it this far. I guess we'll do a couple more. Okay, what do you want? At the Sangoma, it is. I was going to say at the Sangoma. Okay. All right. All right, band, start at the Sangoma, please.
got this Sangoma, I asked the ancestors, I asked the ancestors about my suffering. You cannot understand it, the ancestors said. You were born, you were born to too much of the possible. If I was born free, if I was born free, then what are you to me? You were not born free. You were not born free, they said. To be born free would be not to be born. the ancestors about their suffering because it was ours now it is yours it is yours the way the very shape of your head is yours ancestors about the children the children is it their suffering too that that is your problem they said that is your problem honor it or not. Sometimes my own audacity appalls me. <laughs> but my favorite review 
of my memoir, a guy named Ron Slate said, this is my attempt to tell the story of my life. Jersey Breaks. My favorite thing anybody said about that book was Ron Slate said, what this is, this is a book about doing whatever you feel like doing and getting away with it. <laughs> so, so here comes the poem Rhyme, which I will, uh, I will say a cappella, and then the band will do their most amazing things yet. <laughs> Led by Lawrence Hovgood. Rhyme. Air, an instrument of the tongue. The tongue, an instrument of the body. The body, an instrument of spirit. The spirit of being of the air. Each bird, the medium of its song. Each song, a world, a containment. Like a hotel room, ready for us guests who inherit our compartment of time there. In the Joseph Cornell box, among ephemera as its element, the preserved bird, a study in spontaneous elegy, the parrot, art, mortal in its cornered sphere. Each room a stanza, rung in a laddered filament, clambered by all us unsteady chambered voices, each one saying, I too was here. I too was here in a room, a rhyme, a song, in the box, in books, each element an instrument, the body still straining to parrot the spirit of being of air.
among ephemera as its element. The preserved bird. A study in spontaneous elegy. The parrot art. Mortal in its cornered sphere. to stop once through quickly. Air, an instrument of the tongue. The tongue, an instrument of the body. The body, an instrument of spirit. The spirit, a being of the air. Each bird, the medium of its song. Each song, a word, a containment, like a hotel room, ready for us guests who inherit our compartment of time there in the Joseph Cornell box among ephemera as its element, the preserved bird, a study in spontaneous elegy, the parrot, art, mortal in its cornered sphere. Oh, each room, each room a stanza. Each room a stanza rung in a lighter filament, clambered by all us unsteady chambered voices that share it. Each one reciting, I too, I too was here. Yeah, 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 in a room, in a room, in a rhyme, a song, in the box, in books,
each element and instrument still straining to parrot the spirit of being of air. John Rockwood on bass. Stan Strickland doing various things. The great Minu Sinello doing many things. Lawrence Hobgood. Roberto Pesky. We love this room. We're very, very grateful to City Space and Amy McDonald for letting us how much fun we had right in front of you, thanks to them. <laughs> <laughs>